All right. Um, I would like to talk a bit about uh, processes and uh, because I use a lot of improvisation um, in my work and uh, recently, like two weeks ago, I was in Cyprus, I took five dances and then there were five dances uh, that live in Cyprus and we worked for a week on um, working from improvisation to composition. And I would like to share some of those uh, questions that we had with you and some of my practices. Um, as I said earlier, like the scripts are down for me from the very first uh, day and what we do is we read the uh, different scenes in different scenarios and with different contexts. And because I work um, nearly every year with Greek tragedy, I did Ajax uh, three years ago, two years ago, two, I did Helen of Troy, this year Hippolytus and next year uh, the women of Trachis, but I'm going to rename that as the wife of Heracles. So what we do is we completely rewrite the material. So the very, very first thing is to see what is actually in the text. And then through improvisation, we work on different, or, or, or on a scene, for example. We, we read it first and then we leave the scripts there and then we completely update it and modernize it, go away, write it, come back next day, um, see how it works, direct it, see if we can refine the language and completely um, uh, include it into the new vision. Usually, um, um, I, I, I provide a, a, a framework for the work to be done. So this year, it was an amateur boxing club. So everything had to be happening within that. And uh, we are very happy to have, the, of course, the Cultural Olympics here. So there's a lot of discussion about art and culture and how they, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sports and culture and how they combine. And those were very important elements in how we created that performance. Also, uh, dealing with accidents, like for example today there were two accidents that happened, accidents, that means events that were not planned, like the, the use of the, of the, of the towel and the, and the silent speaking, because that could be features that appear um, quite uh, in, the, in the whole uh, process and then they can be used as important aspects of that work. Like for example, the speaking with no voice could have become a nice little feature in the production if that was required, but that was something that I was not expecting and then it happens there and then it could be taken out of context and um, be create, become a, a motif for the whole piece if that was what we wanted to do. Another thing I do from very early on is a graph. So at the very beginning I just have one line and say this piece is going to be 90 minutes. What are we going to have? And I usually feel very, very impatient about what is the beginning and what is the ending of the piece. Um, um, I know that the journey between is very, very important, but I feel very uncomfortable if I start a performance and not know those two pointers. So uh, usually what I do is work on those two. That's why I said I do not work uh, chronologically. And it's something that is either frustrating or liberating for the performers, not to know that you're going to do everything as you're used to. And that shakes them a bit and gets uh, interesting things out of them. So what we do is basic event mapping. So the very first week we're going to say, all right, it's 90 minutes. The first scene is going to be like, what, three minutes? Yeah. Then the second scene, six minutes? Yeah. Then nine minutes. And then we see the whole shape and we work around that as if composing a piece of music. Uh, I remember my PhD supervisor when I did a, a, a music composition PhD at the University of Leeds, Phil Wilby, the very first thing he asked me to do is just a graph. We're just saying, please outline the piece. It's 12 minutes. What's happening in it? And I apply this when I, while composing theatre. And personally, I find it very useful. Um, the, stu uh, the, the student performers now have adopted that when they do their own work. And they find it that having that graph really allows them a lot of um, understanding of the shape and the structure of the piece. Um, also, what's very interesting is that um, you notate parts of the rehearsal before even you actually rehearse them. And you know that piece, as I said earlier, like we're looking for a piece around five, six minutes. It was only four minutes twenty, but then having that sense of how long things are. And for composers, I think a lot of composers have this tendency while they walk, they compose, and they have a full understanding of what 60 seconds is. But with um, possibly actors, it's, 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 it's not exactly the same. So if you say, how long was that? As you, for example, you said it was much, uh, it was two minutes or three minutes. But it's, it gives you a good understanding of what it means to have a piece which is four minutes and 20 seconds. So I find the graph is a very important part of, of the process. Um, I, I use a lot of music to create characterization. And also I, I work with... Um, an emotional graph to map a scene. So if there's a very long monologue and we don't know what's happening in it and we'd like to see what are the different journeys 
Um, we use also the book by Marina Calderone called Actions, where it gives you different verbs. What are you doing here? I want to, to uh, excite, I want to intrigue, I want to flirt with. So using that, we create this emotional graph to map a scene. And usually I ask them to do colors. So when you start the scene, what is it? It's bright. And then by the end of it, it becomes dark. So that scene could have been completely painted in colors so that the performer knows exactly what are the different nuances, like music, for example, when we've got the, the dynamics and the different um, timbre that we can create with the instrumentation. The same here, that emotional graph, just by coloring in, I found that it's very helpful for them to understand what's happening and how they can really manipulate not only their own emotions, but manipulate the, the audience where they want to take them.